So I feel like doing a little bit of modeling again. So we're gonna be making from scratch all the way through to the final render, we're gonna be making this lantern in Blender 4.0. So this is gonna be part one, the bit you're watching here, where we're gonna do the modeling, and then in part two, we'll do the materials and the lighting. So this is kind of like somewhere between beginner and intermediate. I'm gonna keep it relatively simple. We're gonna be using this screw modifier to kind of make most of the body of the lantern here, keeping things really simple. And as always, I'll be uploading my final result to Patreon as well. So if this is something you wanna learn, to do, let's get into part one and make a vintage looking lantern. So jumping into a new scene in Blender, um, we're gonna be making a lantern. But first of all, let's get a bit of reference. So I'd recommend you go to something like Google, just go to Google images and just type in a lantern and then find one. But I'm gonna go with just kind of like the traditional lantern style like this. So if you guys really wanna see the same reference, you could just go ahead, take a screenshot of this. Um, but just follow along with what I'm doing and you should be fine. I'm just gonna be loosely basing it off that anyway. I'm not gonna be try I'm not gonna be trying to be millimeter perfect here. So um, yeah, let's jump in. So we're gonna go A to select everything and we're gonna press delete. Shift A under our mesh options, we're gonna add in a cylinder. Let's go to our front orthographic view and tab into edit mode. And uh, with everything active, let's just go G, Z and hold in control. And that's gonna allow us to snap it to the grid. So we're gonna move it so it's sitting on the very top like that on our floor. And then let's just grab this top face and go G, Z and move it down till it's kind of like a disc like this. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna to go to our top of graphic view and just in wireframe, select two verts to our left. So just these two verts here that make up an edge. Then go Control I to inverse the selection and then press delete and delete the verts. Now we just have the singular edge here and then we're gonna to go to our modifiers. Add modifier, we're gonna type in screw and get the screw modifier and now it's gonna spin it around like this for us, which is really awesome. So now let's go to our front view. We're gonna grab this top vertex here. So we have a disc looking like this and in our front view, we're gonna go E to extrude and extrude it just a little bit like so. And then we're gonna go E to extrude and we're gonna extrude it um, out like this then E to extrude up. And then once again, E to extrude and then E to extrude, just making a lip like this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go E to extrude in a little bit and then E to extrude and Z. Go up just slightly and then E to extrude again and Z. Let's go up about this much. And then let's go add modifier, search, and let's get a sub and get a subdivision surface. And now we can see it's looking pretty nice and smooth. So let's grab this bottom vertex here. Let's go E to extrude and Z X, move it in a bit. E to extrude and X, G, Z, let's move it up. And if you wanted to, you can go E to extrude and X and move it in all the way, but I don't, I'm not gonna worry about closing this gap as we won't be seeing that. We've now modeled kind of like the base here. Let's make the round bit going up like so. So we're gonna grab this vertex here and we're gonna go E to extrude just a little bit. And then we're gonna go E to extrude about this much. And let's just go E, E, and let's go to about here, like this. And then with this vertex still active, we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate it. And let's move it in over here. And let's go E to extrude and Z to extrude it up. So now we have an edge like this. And if, uh, I'll probably just grab these two and just move them in on the X and just move them up just a little bit. There we go, that's looking better. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab this vertex up here. We're gonna go E to extrude just a little bit. And then we're gonna go E to extrude and let's keep extruding into about here, like that. Then we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate a vertex and let's just place it inside. And let's go E to extrude. And then we're just gonna extrude out like so. Extrude again. Let's go again about here. And then we're gonna go E to extrude up like that. And let's go E to extrude like so. And then let's go E to extrude inwards. And let's extrude all the way kind of to the middle almost like so, like that. And then we're gonna grab a vertex here. And in our front field, let's go Shift D to duplicate that vertex, bring it in and then E to extrude it out. And let's just kind of bring it like so, and then E to extrude. And we're gonna start the glass bit here, and we're gonna just make a bulb running like so. 
Maybe let's extrude in and then bring it in like so. And then let's just grab a vertex on this bottom piece and go Control L. That just selects the whole loose bit. And we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate and Z. And just keep moving it up till it's about here. And then we're gonna go S, Z, minus one. And that's gonna invert it. We're gonna press Enter. So S, Z, minus one. And now we have this bit here at the top. So just kind of match it. So now we have the um, glass component here. And if any of this looks too big, you could just grab it at any point and just scale it and go G to move it in. It's very forgiving with this sort of style of modeling, but we just want like this general look like so. And as you guys can see, this is the reference we're following. So it's looking pretty good. Uh, but before we go any further, something I'd like to do first, um, probably just grab this thing here, just move it down just a bit. And let's add kind of like the spokes or the holders that go cross like so, and that's gonna be really simple. So in object mode, we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna add in a torus. Let's tab into edit mode and with everything active, we're gonna go Alt S and just scale it in along the normal so it's really skinny. Then we're gonna tab back out and let's go G, Z and move it up till it's roughly in the middle here. Add modifier, let's go search and type in mirror and get a mirror modifier. Now let's tab into edit mode and let's go R to rotate it like so. S to scale it and rotate it just till it's kind of touching the bottom here and the bottom up, the top up here. And then if you go to your right view, you can see it's not looking quite right. So we're gonna go S, Y and just flatten that on the Y, but we still don't wanna touch in the glass. So just something like that. And now we can tab back out and we can right click and go shades move. And now we have that bit done. So that was pretty easy to make. So let's grab our lantern again. Let's tab into edit mode. And I think what we need to do is just grab some of these verts up here and just go delete them. And then let's grab a vertex over here. So we want us to kind of um, extrude just a little bit and then start extruding up. So we're gonna go E to extrude and let's go E to extrude and Z to make it go a little bit higher. So you want something that looks kind of like this. Maybe I'll just move this in just a bit and maybe move it up like that. So I'm just trying to match the reference here as much as possible. In fact, what I think I'm gonna do is just select two verts here in the end, right click and go subdivide, and then kind of just move a vertex in here and then bring this one in, just to create a little bit more of a lip towards the end here, like that. I think that just looks a bit better. Now let's select this top vertex here, shift D to duplicate, move it in, and then E to extrude, and let's extrude it out like so making a lip and let's go E to extrude up a little bit, E to extrude, E to extrude a little bit in. And now let's go E to extrude and just make kind of like a flange shape going up. So I'm just extruding. So something like this and then it goes up. And then let's go E to extrude in and then E to extrude in again. And then let's go Shift D to duplicate this vertex, place it over here and then go E to extrude and Z and extrude up. And let's go E to extrude in, E to extrude in. So now we have something like this. Now we're gonna tab back out. Make sure to save as you're going. I think now what we're gonna do is make the side spokes here, the, oh, whatever you call these things, these kind of like holders that give the lantern support on the sides. So in object mode, we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna to go to our mesh options. Let's add in a plane. Let's go G and move it over to the side. R, X, 9, 0, hit enter. Let's tab into edit mode and if it all active, we're gonna go X and this go only faces. So it kind of leaves us with just the edge. Let's go S to shrink it down a bit and we're gonna right click and we're gonna go subdivide. Let's grab half of this and press delete and delete those verts. Add mirror, let's type in mirror, give it a mirror modifier, enable clipping. And then let's grab this vertex here, control shift B. Let's create a bevel like this and then select these two verts and go X and delete the edge. Then let's grab these two verts and go E to extrude X and then press F to fill them in. And then let's grab these up here, right click and go subdivide and just create a vertex going up like so. And we're just kind of making this sort of shape here and maybe let's just grab these two, right click and go subdivide. Something like this and then grab this bottom vertex and go control shift B, create a bevel and now we have a shape that looks like this. We're gonna press A, S, Z, flatten it just a bit. Then we're gonna tab back out and let's go to our modifier here and just go ahead and apply the mirror. 
Now let's go add mirror. Let's go again and type in mirror and get a mirror modifier. This time we're going to click on the eyedropper and then select our lantern as reference. Now we can tab into edit mode and with this active, we're going to go R, Z, 9, 0. G to move it in, S to scale it down. And let's go R, Y, 9, 0 and hit enter to rotate it like so. And scale it down a bit. And now we're going to go placing it. In fact, I'm just going to have a quick look at the reference. So you want to start about down here somewhere. So I'm just going to go and move this about here rotate it slightly and then go E to extrude and let's extrude it all the way up past here to about this point right over here R to rotate it slightly and then let's press A to select all of it and go Alt N and just recalculate the normals by going recalculate outside let's go add modifier and type in sub and add a subdivision surface and we might have to scale it just a little bit more something like that now we can just go ahead and grab these bottom verts and in our front orthographic we're going to go E to extrude and yes I am aware you could use the spin tool but I prefer just to do this by hand. I'm going to go E to extrude, R to rotate, E to extrude, R to rotate, um, let's go E to extrude, R to rotate and then E to extrude and let's extrude it in here and I might just grab the whole thing just move it down a bit so this is very forgiving. You can easily move this around after you've extruded. So something like that. And let's grab these top verts and let's go E to extrude, R to rotate them slightly. E to extrude, R to rotate. E to extrude, R to rotate. And then E to extrude and X. And there we have it. So just grab this whole thing, just move it down maybe just a bit to about here. And uh, having a look at the reference, it could probably go a little bit higher. So going to the front view, I'm just going to press A to select everything and go G. Maybe just move it out and down just a little bit and then maybe move it in like so. So you can adjust it a uh, slight amount if you have to, but more or less, I think that's looking pretty good. And let's go into object mode and right click and go shade smooth with that as well. And now we have that bit done. So let's actually grab this top bit and I think looking at the reference what we need to do here is just grab um, this over here and just kind of bring it out a little bit more but that's optional I think you know I'm not trying to be 100% accurate to the um, reference we can have a little bit of our own style here if we if we want it so just something like that I think is okay now let's just finish off by making this little dome at the top so let's select the vertex at the top here in a front view, shift D to duplicate, and let's move it into about here. E to extrude and Z to extrude up. And then let's go E to extrude out a little bit, E to extrude out. And then let's go E to extrude up, extrude again. And let's extrude out. And then let's just extrude like so a few times until we come to the middle here. And let's go E to extrude and X, bring it all in closely to close that gap. So now we have this and that's pretty much the body of the lantern done. So now I'm going to tab back out and what we can do from here is add our little uh, fastenings and our little holders and things for the handle and the little knob here. So yeah, so let's quickly do that. So let's go in object mode, shift A. Let's add in a circle. Let's go G, move it up here, RX90. Let's add a mirror modifier. In edit mode, let's just extrude in the edge like so. And then let's select some of the bottom verts, about this many, and let's go E to extrude and Z. Then go S, Z, 0, hit enter. And now we have something like this. Let's press A to select everything, E to extrude. Tab back out, and let's go S to scale it down. Let's click on the eyedropper and select the lantern body. Now you can just come in here and rotate it and scale it. And I might scale them down just a little bit more and place them right here on the ends. Let's go add modifier and type in bevel and let's give them a bevel modifier and uh, let's make it nice and big for them and just up to segment count then let's right click and go shade smooth and now those are looking really nice. And shift A let's just quickly add in a torus and move it up. RX90 scale it way down 
and let's just tab into edit mode and go alt s to make it a bit skinnier and I might just move it up and place this over here like that and I know it doesn't quite match the reference but I think this kind of looks really cool with that sort of things. So I'm going to leave it as it is, tab back out, right click and go shade smooth. So if you guys want to go ahead and add in like a curve and model like a nice little um, handle for it, go ahead and do that. I'm going to leave that bit out because I, I don't really care about it too much. Uh, but that's something really simple you could add in. But I think a crucial component would be the knob here. So let's just quickly go Shift A, add in a cylinder, and let's just move it up. And this should be really easy. So let's just go Control R, left click and just slide in an edge coming down to about here. Go to your face select and then just select all of these faces at the bottom, these ones here and go E to extrude, right click and then go S shift Z and scale it out. So S shift and Z. So scale it out like so. And then let's just grab this top face, move it down a bit and then go Control B to create a bevel. And then let's just select these faces, F3 and let's just type in checker, checker deselect and let's go E to extrude, right click. Let's go Alt S and just scale it out along normals and then S Z and scale it down like so. Let's tab back out and let's get our modifiers and let's give this a bevel by typing in bevel. And this is adjust the settings here and up the segments. Right click and go shade smooth. And now let's go to our right orthographic view. In edit mode, maybe let's just grab this edge over here and bring it down a bit and move the whole thing up just a bit to the origin points at the bottom. And tabbing back out, I'm just gonna go G in my right orthographic view, move it down, S to scale it, and you guys can scale this however you want, but more or less, it's gonna sit somewhere here at the front, as you can see. So I'm gonna scale mine down a bit, R to rotate it, and just tuck it up right against here. And then from the front, this is what we have. So might scale it just a bit bigger. And I think that is looking really good. So I'll see you guys in part two, where we'll start doing some of our scene setup, materials and lighting.